Hi YouTubers, Red Razor 56 here with just a couple of little personal modifications that I've made to my razor. Uh, maybe you guys can learn some stuff, use your imagination. We got lots of great vendors out there that supply us awesome, wonderful products. Um, a lot of the stuff, realistically, you can't build it at home. You don't have a machine shop, you don't have a forge, you don't have all the high-end stuff that it takes to build that so we buy that stuff from the vendors but there's a lot of stuff that they don't make that you should be making first of all just to personalize your machine and second of all just to give you a good feeling that yours is the only machine on the trail out there with a particular modification and uh, what I've done here today uh, when we go out in the woods we usually have our action packer Rubbermaid Action Packer, a lot of you guys have them. That's full of all your trail gear. Toe straps, tools, fix-a-flat, tire plugs, some lubricant, things like that. Uh, then we carry a tote 12 of some kind, one with uh, food and the other one with some canned goods in it. And you can't leave home without some canned goods. But what we noticed after three and a half years, four years on the trails, we've noticed that the coolers are always upside down. You can't keep them steady. If you need to haul a gas can, you've got a problem. And the problem is that the razor has an indentation in the center area of the bed. And it prevents you from having a full flat area across the, 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 the back there. And you don't want to get too carried away with elevating the whole thing because now you've offset your center of gravity a little bit and your stuff's up higher and it just doesn't work out. So what I did, trying to keep either my gas cans or my coolers on a more level ride, is I just came up with a piece of uh, half inch OSB. This is stuff I had laying around the shop. You probably have it up at your garage or something like that. And then just a little one by that I had to shave down. And what I did was I made a plate here that can go in and I now have a flat spot where I can put my cooler or my gas can or whatever else I'm carrying there. Serves another purpose too. It uh, acts as a free heat shield. We now ride with these and these are experimental. They've worked out so well that I'm probably going to uh, give them a double coat of paint so the water doesn't get to them and rot them away. I might even go a little further than that but truthfully uh, stuff that I had laying around the shop, it cost me nothing to build because it was kind of sitting there in the extra pile. And on this side here, I didn't have a piece of OSB or Bland X or whatever you want to call it big enough. So I just got a small one, but it serves the exact same purpose. I can still put the cooler over here, and I've got a flat spot. So now the cooler isn't falling down in this recessed hole where my action packer is. And I've seen just about every combination of freight carrying abilities on the back of these razors. Some guys specialize in carrying fuel, other guys carry the food and the water, other guys are nothing but tool caddies and chase vehicles. So just get creative on what you do to your own razor and personalize it. Here's another deal. You'll notice my fire extinguisher up here. And I'll zoom in on that. At the time I put this stuff on, the vendors did not offer all the cool uh, Oh, uh, accessories that they have now. They're just the market was just so much limited, or so much more limited than it is today. And now they've got all these cool billet aluminum brackets and everything. But they didn't have that stuff when I was doing my razor. It was in very short supply, and it was really only for the guys that had an extra eighty or a hundred dollars for a set of these deals. So what I did about three years ago, being an electrician, I came up with a clamp here. And this is a, uh, a number four conduit clamp. You can buy these at Home Depot or Lowe's or an electrical supply house. It's a one and a half inch electrical conduit clamp. And they are about two bucks a piece. They come with a carriage bolt and a nut. And you can take these and you can open them up and you can slide them around your inch and three quarter roll cage and squeeze them back down and they fit the roll cage like they were built for it. I don't know why the dimension says inch and a half, it's just a different method of measurement on the conduit than it is for the roll bar material. I painted some of mine black so they match the razor. I have uh, 
this particular one here is lined with some rubber padding that I had and I just super glued it in there and that was for when I had originally done my fire extinguisher mount and they were just vibrating all over the place and I couldn't clamp them down tight enough and that's because this rear roll bar clamp or this rear roll bar is not the same diameter it's like an inch and a half instead of inch and three quarter and guess what the inch and a half clamps don't close down but anyway uh, four dollars and change and I made myself a fire extinguisher mount had it up there for three or four years now then I made myself a set of breakaway mirrors and here's those clamps again that's the exact same clamp right there and I came up with some wing nuts I can loosen those get the desired amount of tension on the clamp and when we're on a really tight trail or loading it into the enclosed trailer you just pull those mirrors down like that and tighten the nut up and uh, I now have my own break, set of breakaway mirrors. The mirrors I got at a big box store, they were like $18, something like that. And I just took an 8mm bolt and went into the back of the mirror. I double nutted it so I can, the mirror is locked in the position that I want. Uh, the bolt goes into the mirror because the mirror surface was threaded. And I, and I wound up with as much parts that I didn't use from the mirror kit. They use a, the mirror kit was probably made for like an ATV with those metal studs that stick up and you thread them into your handlebars or your ATV. But I didn't want to use any of that stuff. And now I've got a mirror on both sides of my machine. And I also used one of those brackets up here for my center rear view mirror. And it's kind of hard to see, but the bracket's up there on the top. It's right up here. And I just went to the local auto parts store, nice old guy that has one. I just bought an $18 mirror and took it apart and got it where I wanted it and uh, mounted the mirror up there. And again, a lot of this stuff was done. I, I dearly love the vendors to death and all the wonderful stuff that they provide. But give me some credit. I'm not trying to take any business or anything away from them guys. But I built a lot of my stuff before we had vendors like in the caliber that we do now. And uh, I guess my point is, don't be afraid to do some experimentation on your machine. This stuff is inexpensive to build. Uh, at the end of the day, you'll either like it or you'll, or you'll hate it and throw it in the trash can. Um, choice is yours, but just go up to your shop someday and tackle one of those projects that's driving you crazy that you just, at the end of the day, you've just been fighting something, whether it's a rattle, uh, whether it's a cargo just flying around the back of your cargo box or something. Get up there, make yourself a project, feel good about yourself, and personalize your machine to your own likings. Red Razor 56 here, saying live to ride another day.